All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Jody, and I'm the administrator for the Eastside Culture Crawl. Uh, welcome to our first ever virtual preview week. Uh, before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that we're living and working and creating on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh nations. So this is the third in our series of four artist demos. Um, you can find more information about all the demos and watch them and also find out more information about how the crawl is working this year on our website at culturecrawl.ca. So this afternoon we have with us Kari Christensen who is a fabulous printmaker from 1000 Parker Street. Uh, if you've ever wondered how to make a linoleum print, I would say this demo is for you. Um, so if you have any questions along the way, you can uh, use the chat or the Q&A, or if you're on Facebook, you can ask them there and uh, we'll answer them. So I guess with that, I will pass things over. Hey, everybody. Hello there. To all the Frida fans, here's Frida. Welcome to my studio at 1000 Parker Street. OK, say bye, Frida, now. <laughs> bye, bye. <laughs> Uh, it's Studio 204. So if you've been here before, you know it's a fairly large studio. So who, helping me today, I've got Tara Bennett. Uh, she also has space in this studio. So she's going to carry the computer around and follow me as I stumble about the studio trying to show you how to print a linoleum print. And uh, my studio mate, Jen, she's at the back there today, Jen Clark. Yay! It's love to, I love to work in a studio with other artists. It gives you, uh, you know, besides the occasional dance party at nighttime, which, you know, I bust out some really bad moves. And uh, yeah, anyway, I love the energy of working in a studio with other people. So, okay, what I plan on showing you today is uh, the printing part, because it's the most exciting part. Um, but before we get there, I'm going to show you just the steps uh, along the way. Okay, so let's do, let's start. Let's, let's go. Um, and I'm wearing a white shirt. I just want to point that out because it's my lucky printing color. I know it's, it seems silly that I'm printing things in dark color, but I, I, uh, I always wear white, it's my, it's, yeah, because I, I like to be very, very clean. Um, okay, so uh, first steps. So the first thing that you do, what, like the first thing that I do, and now everything I tell you, um, I'm telling you the things that make a linoleum print work for me. Like granted that like, you could try all this stuff and it wouldn't work for you. Every printmaker has their own specific way of doing things. So here we go. Mm -hmm. Are we good? Okay. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing you start with is a, is a sketch. So I've left all the pieces here for this, the print that we'll be printing today. Um, so I know kind of hard to see here, but here's the sketch. So the first thing I do is I draw, I draw a sketch out on uh, newsprint. Nothing fancy, I just have a roll of cheap paper around and uh, I always do it on the newsprint. So once I have it all worked out, the drawing all worked out, the next thing that I do is, uh, Oh, maybe we should talk a little bit about the print. Yeah, maybe we'll talk a little bit about the print. So this one uh, was actually inspired by Emily Carr. Um, she has a particular uh, piece of work called Scorned as Timber, Beloved of the Sky. Tara's gonna bring it over. Woo, woo, woo. There it is. Um, as an artist who, who's, who's working during COVID, I'd say that uh, some of the emotions of the time have, have, have seeped into my work. And so this series that I'm working on right now uh, is quite a bit about uh, feelings of isolation, uh, yet still being you know, still being part of a group and still part of a whole and still part of a generation. So uh, I'm sure Emily created this for a different reason, but for me, it spoke to me about uh, the the singularity. So that was my my jumping off point. If you've never read any of Emily Carr's books, I know she's an artist, but actually, I think she's a better writer than she was an artist, which might be you know, controversial to say, but uh, uh, her writing is really good. She was a landlord in Victoria. And so her books about uh, how to be a landlord are really funny. She has some really funny stuff. Okay, so do you wanna, okay. Okay, so let's go back to what we're doing here. Okay, so we have the drawing mm -hmm. and it's all newsprint. So the next thing that happens is that because a lino print prints in reverse, I have to reverse the drawing. So I have to draw it again on Tracing paper, that's what I do. So I just put the tracing paper over top of the drawing. There we go. Uh, I put the tracing paper over top and then when I transfer it to linoleum, I transfer it so I can flip it over like this. So I can show you what a piece of linoleum looks like before. So this is just a regular piece of linoleum. The linoleum that I prefer to use is Battleship Gray. I think it holds uh, detail really well. Um, you can use a lot. I mean, if you're just starting out doing lino, you can use like the soft cuts and stuff like that, but they don't really hold the detail really well and they don't last 
as long as the, as the Battleship Grey does. I prefer it, it's my favorite. I have to order a giant roll of it and then uh, gently hack away at it throughout the year. Um, so after I've traced it onto the tracing paper, in order so it prints the right way, I've got to reverse it. So I'll reverse it and that's how I transfer it down onto the block with a piece of tracing paper. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And then uh, one of the other things that I do is that I sand my linoleum. Now you can, like if you ever have touched a piece of linoleum, it's got a fairly rough surface and uh, it's a little gritty. And you know, who knows where that has been shipping wise and stuff. And there's little bits of lino left on there, like little crumbly bits. So I'll just give it a quick stand with uh, some wet sandpaper and water. And what that does is just make the surface quite a bit more receptacle, receptive to the ink that I use. Um, okay, so that's that. <laughs> And then uh, the next part is uh, carving. Um, so the carving can take anywhere, you know, depending on the size of the piece, uh, from three or four days to uh, just over a week for the can bigger ones. Up to the screen. <laughs> Let's so see. you get a good look at the, the details. It? There we go. Yeah. There we go. So this is the one that we're going to print today. Uh, it's called the Forest Tower. Uh, so the way that I carve it. Here, Tara, can we bring them and show them here? Mm -hmm. There we go, this is my drawer of special tools. So in here, these are all the knives that I use to carve the linoleum. So what they are, they're basically all V gouges in varying, uh, varying widths. So by varying like how far in I go and uh, how wide the line is uh, and which knife I use, cause some of them like for this one, you can barely see, there's barely any tip on there whatsoever. It carves the finest little line. Um, my favorite tools of all, as you can probably tell by this, is this tool. This is the nicest tool of all. These are called file tools. They're really difficult to get in, in, uh, in North America, but they are stunning. But everything is fine. I mean, the speed balls, people often ask me like how often you have to replace these blades. And I keep sharpening mine over the course of uh, carving, like every half an hour or so, I'll just go in and sharpen it and then hone the edge of it. And this blade is over two years old. So as long as you take care of them, they'll last uh, a long time. Okay. And that's my very organized drawer. So, and I like to stand right where Tara is actually, so I can just reach over while I'm carving and grab the knife and then put it back in the, in the right spot and then grab the next one. It's very systematic. Okay, let's mm -hmm. show them the lino again. Okay. Okay, so, uh, once it's all carved, this is really treacherous lighting, isn't it? Anyway, once it's all carved, uh, I tend to leave a little edge. Um, there's a reason that I do that is that like some of these lines, if you can see like the lines at the bottom here, here we go. They go right off the edge of the linoleum. So if you were carving with a knife, the knives are very sharp. If you go off the edge, sometimes going off the edge, the lino has a tendency to crumble. So I want it to crumble off of my picture plane. So I leave a little bit of an edge and then I'll take an X-Acto knife later and cut down the border that I want just to maintain these really crisp, crisp lines on the edges. Um, all right, and then just out of curiosity, like you can show them. When they're all done carving, like this is, I like to keep the little pile. This is, the, this is all the stuff that came off of that one. Fun, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then final steps before printing, uh, I'll do what I call edging. So I take an X-Acto knife and I cut down the edge of the lino. And I like to leave a, a quarter of an inch margin here. Um, any more than that, and when you're rolling the ink out, you can sometimes catch it with the roller. So I like a, a nice, a nice uh, small edge there. So when you cut this with an X-Acto knife, what it tends to do is make a little edge on either side, like a sharp edge. Um, and so I take a little bit of sandpaper and I sand all along the edge here, just so the ink doesn't catch there, because it, it will. Um, and then I, what else do I do? I erase all of my pencil marks. Um, you can do Sharpie or watercolor or something over top of lino to make the carving quite a bit easier. So when you're carving, you can see, um, you can see your lines more sharp and it can tell you, you know, where, where you might want to carve more, more detail and stuff in. Now I prefer to not color my lino and I prefer to cut it um, with the knives. And that's why, like you can see on my desk here, Tarp, you spin it around. Where, what are we looking where, at? I want to show them the lights. Oh. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this is the way my the setup of my desk. So like when I'm carving, I like, I prefer not to color it and I prefer to use the light to give it shadow so I can see what I'm doing. Um, so we can basically show them what, 
over my shoulder a little bit so you can get an idea of what it, what it looks like from my point of view. So like when I'm carving in here, I'll pull these lights in varying closeness and far. Like the shadow, you can get, you can see exactly where you're going and you can see the edge of the knife going through the lino and you can either follow the edge like that and then make your beautiful little papers. A question people often ask is how do you get such straight lines? Do you use a ruler? <laughs> yeah, uh, I use a ruler for the drawing, of course, because you can see this drawing. It's got a lot of straight lines on it. And my work generally right now is an exploration of light and shadow using line. So I draw all the lines on using a ruler, but you can't carve on a ruler because if you picture it, the knives are shaped like this, they're V gouges. So if you put them up against a ruler, uh, you're either gonna carve the edge of the ruler as well, or uh, if it's a metal ruler, um, you're gonna really fuck up your blade. Oops, sorry, I swore. You're gonna, you're gonna mess up that blade and you don't want that blade to get any little, little burrs or stuff in it. So once they're, the lines are drawn on the line now, I, I just follow them along very steadily. I carve really slowly. Uh, if you go slow and steady, um, it also avoids any injuries as well. Like that's the other question I get asked a lot is uh, how often I hurt myself. And I actually don't anymore. Um, it's very rare that I would cut myself. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. If I cut myself, geez, imagine what my fingers would look like. So yeah, so I find the combination of light uh, to help with the carving. And I actually prefer not to color it because for me, and you'll see that when we start inking it up in a minute, um, the first minute when you roll the ink out is so exciting. Like that's, as an artist, that's when you see uh, everything that you've been thinking about in your head come to life. Uh, and you know, like when I, when I think about a scene, like I'm looking at the light and shadow in the dark, and then you have to also think about what that's gonna look like reversed. So in my head, I've already planned it out to what I think it's going to look like with the ink on it. So it's really exciting for me. That moment is so fun. Okay. Are we get, are we get, does that mean we're gonna do that now? Okay, wait, wait, last oh. step. Last step is I, I know I always have this toothbrush on my desk and I'm worried that when people come in the studio, they think that I'm really into oral hygiene, which I am, but I'm also into really, I'm into oral hygiene for my lino. So the last thing I do is I take all the little bits out because it leaves little bits of stuff. And if you leave like a little tiny bit of dust or a tiny bit of lino in there, cause it's a bit crumbly, um, when you go to roll it out, that's going to show up on your print somewhere. And if you have like, like for example, a tiny bit of lino, once I roll it out and put it through the press, if it lands somewhere on, on here, you'll see it, it leaves like a big halo. And again, I'm telling you all these things because they're things that have happened to me and I've learned over time. Um, so yeah, so I erase all my pencil marks, give it a clean with the uh, toothbrush. And then I actually also give it a really quick wipe with Windex in case I've left too many uh, greasy fingerprints on there. So now we're gonna move on to the printing part, which is, who are we kidding, most exciting part. All right, so I'm just gonna find a spot so you just do what you gotta do. Okay. It's actually gonna live over there. Oh. Yeah, sorry. You might have to stay over there. There you go. How's All that? Right. Is that good? Good, yeah. Maybe um, we can show everyone what we've got here. We've got the thing that I used to take the, the ink out of the can with. We've got the ink and we've got the roller. I roll out on a glass plate. Uh, that's just what works for me. It's easy to clean up. I use a razor blade to clean up and don't use a whole lot of solvent, so that's great. And then I always have the plate sitting beside me here. So uh, I'll ink up and then I'll ink up over the plate. So that's what's gonna happen. So I really apologize for this part because it's not the most exciting thing except for when I go to ink it on the plate, but it takes me a couple of minutes to get there. So talk to amongst mm -hmm. yourselves. Yeah. So when, so today you're doing quite a small print. Why do you do small prints? Because you, you normally also have very, like, quite large ones. So what's, yes. what's the story? Ah, yeah. So um, I often do smaller ones first. So this one's an 8 by 8 um, And I, I do them for a couple of reasons. Um, they're called studies. So what I'm doing is I, it takes so many hours to carve one of the big ones that um, I wouldn't want to make a mistake uh, in one of the big ones. I can and regret it later. So what I mean by mistake is that, like, you know, once I print it, I get upset about the fact that I didn't do that shadow right or this needs a little bit more emphasis here. or So the study gives me a chance to work out all of my problems in a small scale before I transfer it to a big one. Plus, it also means that I have work that's a bit smaller and so I can offer work that's a bit more affordable at a lower price as well. I mean, as an artist, you gotta think about these things. Um, did you wanna go over there and show them the study? And the yeah. They're on the wall there. Yeah, so. That one. We have, yeah, you do your thing. Um, so we have here, we have this small study. Um, and so that's the size that Kari's doing today. We have some other studies. That's a big piece. So that study that we looked at there is here. 
large now. You can kind of see the difference between, uh, between the two. I hold. Yeah, sometimes, this, they're, sometimes they're very different. Yeah, so sometimes they're very different, sometimes they're quite similar. So I think you can see here, Kari brought a little bit of softness into the sky in the um, larger artwork, uh, whereas in this one, it's just line work, so no uh, dots. And the mountain or tree or whatever it is we're imagining this to be in the center is highlighted far more in the larger work because she's done some problem solving um, through the, the study process, which is a very smart thing to do. I will take you on a tour of some other things in the studio that I think are, are cool of Kari's. So behind me here, really big, that is a mural Kari painted. So Kari's a printmaker, but she's also a muralist. She did some sculptures, um, as you can see there. But this um, large piece is from the Love Travels Far uh, when we had the COVID murals. Okay, so you're ready. Well, I want to tell them a little bit about this and then they want to see this part. Mm -hmm. So when I pull the ink out of the can, I used oil-based ink because it has a high pigment count. So you're going to get a, I like a really deep background. So that's one of the things that I use, oil-based. And you take it out of the can using one of these, a little paint scraper. And then uh, you slightly, you just like, you work a little bit on the glass like this, just to warm the ink up a little bit. It just changes the viscosity ever so slightly makes it so it's ready to be put on the plate. It's been sitting in the jar all by itself, all lonely. So now I'm waking it up and inviting it to the party. Um, and then I, you put a bit on here and you start rolling it out with the roller like this. Now, everything that I do, like I try and remind myself to do it really thoughtfully because you could hurry your way through this, but you want this to be like the perfect rollout. Like you don't want any lumps and any weird things. I mean, like you want it to be nice and even because as you roll it out on here, it transfers a layer onto your, onto the brayer, the roller. And you want this to be the nicest, like little thing of ink on there ever. You want it to be like this nice little sheen of ink, not, you know, not too much ink, not too little ink. And that's just kind of something you learn over time and it depends on the ink. This is a fairly stiff ink, which I like to use because it maintains the detail as it goes through the press. So, okay. So I'm gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna start this part and then Tara can show you, come back and show them something else. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the part that I like the most. Um, I don't even know where to, where to start today. I'm so excited. Start over here. I'll lift it up so they can see down onto it. Yeah. And then does that work? Okay. The high tech. High tech setup we've got. It's hard for them to see it. There we go. Is that better? That's perfect. So watch this roll out here. You can see it. The it just all suddenly starts to appear. So what I'm doing is taking the ink on my roller, putting a little bit more on every time, and then I turn this like a pizza. Uh, I have a few rollers. This one I got at a place, uh, it's a place in the States called To Catch, who makes uh, printing presses. They make the finest, the finest rollers ever. Um, it's important to use a roller that's, uh, if, you, if you can afford them and have them, that's uh, equivalent to the size of your plate. Like I have a bigger roller and it would just make a sloppy mess of this one. So I use a slightly smaller roller for the, uh, for the studies. And when did you first start printmaking and, and where have you learned how to, how to do it over the years? Um, I started printmaking in grade seven in Ontario. Uh, we, did, we did it in, in grade school. Um, and then I went to university and went to University of Guelph and I studied with a printmaker called Jean Chu, a Canadian printmaker. Um, and then when I moved to Vancouver, 
I was on a printmaking, I was in a printmaking co-op on Granville Island called uh, Dunderave for quite a few years before uh, I moved to Parker Street on my own. So you pick up things being around other printmakers. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot of it is self-taught stuff as well. Linoleum, isn't, linoleum printing isn't the most popular form. A lot of people like to do etching and litho and screen printing is probably the most popular one. To be careful to get the corners here, very gently. Um, but for me, you know, you just know when you know something that is for you. And for me, uh, linoleum printing is always, it's a very old and traditional way of making, making art. And it, uh, there's something about the different types of skills that appeal to me. Like you, you have to be a good, you have to have a good idea. You have to be good at drawing. Uh, you have to be good at the carving and you also have to be good at the printing. They're all very separate skills. And so I think it keeps me interested and it's, it's pretty varied. And then one of the questions I often get is, do I do other printmaking? And of course I do. Some of my other series have uh, other printmaking techniques in them, but Lino is my one true love. And, you know, I guess I'll stop doing it when I don't have anything to say, but I can't imagine when that's going to be. Okay, so this is, so now all I'm doing now, I've hit the entire surface with ink. I'm just going to put a bit more on there, like just successive layers of light ink. Often the first time that you roll it onto linoleum, the surface sucks it up quite a bit. So the second time I print this, it won't need quite as much ink, but the first time it needs quite a bit. Um, so, talk about the light there? Oh, yeah. So, we have a something prepared earlier, a print that Kari already did, and this is the plate. So it still has the dried ink on it. Yes, I like to leave when I'm when I print a piece, I print it all in one time. I don't go back and print it over again. So instead of cleaning the ink off of the plate, which is what that's called, the line I was called the plate. Instead of cleaning the ink off the plate, I just let it dry there. Uh, the advantage of that is that once the ink has dried on the surface there, you can go back and reuse it if you want to. Um, you can see over there, I've got every plate that I've ever done, including the one that I did in Red Sun. We have all of Kari's previous plates. And oh, here we go. So that's, oh boy, this is not, yeah. So that's from like the Reflected series. Um, some of the small ones and then the large ones. Oh yeah, I got ink on my hands. Um, yeah, it is, it's a little, a little messy, but that's okay. Um, and ooh, let's look at one of Kari's larger pieces that she just recently framed. That's Starry Night. And it was the uh, inspiration for her largest mural that she's done yet at the Bentall Centre in uh, downtown Vancouver, uh, which is really, really, really cool. Um, and that we did, I helped Kari on that uh, in the summer. In September, yeah. And yeah, there was smoke, there was rain, there was, she cracked, she cracked her kneecap, but um, the result is really lovely. So she's got photos of that up on her website uh, for people who aren't in Vancouver. But if you are in Vancouver and downtown, um, it's really worth checking out. And there's some murals by some other really uh, awesome local artists in there. They're quite, quite huge as well, which is um, impressive. And it's cool to see you bring your printmaking technique and I to different. Yeah, that's the thing that, about my work, like the sculptures that are behind us as well. You can see they're clearly part of this series, which is uh, among, they're called Among the Peaks. Um, but everything that I do, I, I try to make it reference somehow back to my printmaking work, because I think, uh, it's important that people know about printmaking. There's uh, not as many of us out there, so mm -hmm. it's an important technique to uh, understand. So for me, it's all I'm trying to do is let people know a bit more about the process. I'm so close. You can tell if you look, the way that the light falls across the surface, you can tell if there's enough ink on there. But you know, mm -hmm. these things are off. 
Yeah, well, and this kind of shows why it makes sense to do a small work first, because to ink up a large, like we're taking a, a fair bit of time here just to do a small bit, but to ink up a large one, to carve a large one, like this is hours and hours and hours and hours of work. So you really want to have solved all of your problems before. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's true, the large ones, I mean, just inking up a large one can take, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour. So close, people. I'm so close. Okay. Hang oh in gosh. there. The suspense. It's almost like waiting for the election results. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So let's see. Just, the first time you put a bit more ink, like I said. And the things, the places on, on the print that are going to be dark black, I often give them just a little more. There is a danger of over inking. That's why I'm pretty careful when I do it. And if you over ink something, all the little tiny lines that I put on there, those little tiny dots in the sky, the rain or the snow or the light or whatever you think they are, um, they'll start to fill in the bank if you over ink something. So just be careful. Now the last thing I do before I print is I take a, because you know even though I try my best and I trim as hard as I can, I still get ink on the edges sometimes. So the last thing I do is give it a quick wipe if I can see that I've hit the edge, which indeed I have this time. Mm. Well, you're multitasking. You don't normally chat. <laughs> That's true. I normally play country music or Celine Dion. Everyone knows if Celine Dion is on, don't disturb me. Yeah. Lucky print music again. I'm pretty superstitious. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, you can't see it. I can't see the questions. So we'll see questions at the end. Um, Okay. All right. We're looking pretty good. And I keep my fingers really clean. There we go. Okay. So then I'm going to take the plate, ink it up, over to the press. Okay. So uh, what you see on the press here is just the way that I use my registration. And so what registration means is every single time that I put the paper down on top of the plate, I want it to end up in the same spot. So how I ensure that is that I build this re registration method and I leave it on the press at all times. Um, so this gives me a two inch margin around the piece, which I like because uh, if people want to frame it so it's floating, you have a nice two inch margin or, you know, it also gives room in case that it, things are a little bit wonky. Sometimes they are. Okay. Put very gently down on the, play the press in the exact same place that I want it. Edges are a bit messy, whatever. Um, and I've already adjusted the pressure on the press. So um, but I always like to double check. Okay. And then last thing, put the paper down. So what I'm doing now, oh, the other thing you see is you see these uh, pieces of lino on either side of the press. They are there to, um, what it is is like you can imagine this puts like thousands of pounds of pressure down on top of this little tiny piece of lino. So if these weren't here, you'd have a tendency for the the roller there to like whoosh, down over the edge like that. So what what that you end up doing there is you get these like smudgy edges along the side and it can screw up your print quite a bit. So if you have it here, this drum is already sitting on top of the, the same height, the same lino as this is. So when it hits that, it's gonna be less of a jolt for it. And so, cause like the, the last thing you wanna do when you're putting something through a press is have any part of, form of movement. Movement is, is the death of printmaking. All right, so I've pre-cut my paper, it's ready to go. Nice and clean. I'll put a little piece of tape on the top cause this holds me, helps me hold it in. Then I line it up with the secondary registration marks here. Very carefully. All right, ready to go. Oh, this is the part that always makes me hold my breath and do a little like prayer to the print gods. <laughs> so I hold the paper on and then start rolling it through. Now, um, I don't use any blankets because with relief printing you don't have to. There's no need to. With etching and stuff like that, you definitely have to because you're trying to go into all these little creases, but I am trying definitely not to go into the creases. So there's no blankets. And the other thing you'll notice is that I'm holding the paper up um, because, sorry, I'm holding my breath slightly. Um, 
you want the paper to touch down at the last possible minute. One of the mistakes people often make is uh, when you put the paper down, if your hands are moving in any way, shape, or form, the paper's going to move as it goes down and leave a double image. If that makes sense. Again, movement, it's the danger of all printmaking. Okay. Here she goes. Okay, we're going to come around the, some of these peaks. You know, I sure hope it worked out. You never know it's the first one. Sometimes, like, you have to work out. Have I got a good angle there? Yeah, sometimes you have to work out the pressure and the amount of ink and stuff. So, if it's not right the first time, I'm really sorry, people, but this is how it goes. It's all about problem solving. And there it is. Awesome. Ta da, ta da, forest tower. Perfect. Excellent. Great. Okay, so we're we're ready to chat to Jody or answer questions. Amazing. I'm back. <laughs> Yay. Okay. That was so great. That was such a wonderful window into your studio and your process. Thank you. Where, where is Jody? I can't see her. Oh, I think I have your video highlighted. So ah, I'm, say hi. I'm, I'm here, but. <laughs> the disembodied voice in the all right um, I'm, just, I'm just checking i'm not seeing any questions here on facebook i think you answered a lot as you were going along i noticed and you had a a question asker that was prompting you so. <laughs> i'm curious i can't help it yeah oh that was Perfect. so fabulous that's so, and it's really exciting when you see the image being revealed when you're inking it I know. I love that part the most. Yeah. <laughs> I think I do. That's probably like, they all, people often ask me what my favorite part is. And I think it's probably that. Yeah. Yeah. I, like a lot of printmakers would probably say the printing because, you know, you're a printmaker. You think the printmaking part, but it's all, it always makes me a bit nervous <laughs> <laughs> even after we're doing it this long. So. Oh, that was so wonderful. I'm still not seeing any questions. So um, I guess we'll. Cool. If, if anyone can has contact questions, you, yeah, they can. Yeah, they can just uh, shoot them to me on Instagram or um, yeah. Email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much uh, Jody, for doing that. No, thanks for the opportunity to uh, have people inside the studio here virtually. It's uh, my pleasure. All right. And thank you everybody for joining us. Okay. Bye guys. Bye.